Right, you guys, got a quick video here for you. I just want to clear the air on a couple of misunderstandings that some people seem to have when it comes to me reviewing custom uh, Windows builds or custom ISOs and things like that. First off, if you've watched my channel for any length of time, you would know that I've always said never download and use custom Windows uh, builds, basically, because they are being unpacked and repacked and they can be packed with malware, backdoors, you know, you just, you name it, crack software, pre-activated windows, all that sort of stuff, which is completely illegal. You would never see me uh, promoting that on my channel and you would never see me uh, giving you links to download any of that stuff. You'd never see me giving you links to the stuff I've created myself, i.e. a debloated Windows version myself. I always tell people if you want it, you can create it yourself because of the legalities of it. So Windows X Lite uh, was, I reviewed this the other day and I did point out the fact that there was some malware related to the links that he was using. I don't think the guy knew that there was uh, you know malware related to that and he has since removed them and he's put them now up on uh, Mediafire. The guys try to change it. I still wouldn't use one from someone else. And the reason for it is because of those reasons, the, the security risks. Now, this is not to do with Windows X Lite. This is to do with all custom uh, ISOs that you could download off the internet that have a version that have been ripped out with loads of bits, a gaming version. No matter who it is, I would not use it. I would create my own if I wanted to do that. But I tend to not use a ripped out super light version like this, I'd just go and use an LTSC uh, version, or I would use a, you know a normal standard version of Windows and basically turn off a few features because the headache is not worth it. It will always break stuff and you will end up having issues. So we've also got Tiny11 and Chris Titus Tech has made a video called Problems with Tiny11. And of course it's caused a bit of a stir a bunch of people have gone backwards and forwards on Twitter here. I think this guy says he feels like it's a bit of a witch hunt. He's given people exactly what they want, and now they're complaining. And this is the internet. People will want a light version. And again, he's created something. And again, there'll be always someone out there trying to nitpick and try to find fault with it. Now, OK, Chris Titus Tech has found a tiny file in there that he says is dodgy and it could be. Uh, botnets, this, that, and God knows what else. But at the end of the day, if you follow the golden rule, which is never use custom ISOs from other people off the internet, all this shenanigans would never be a problem. Now, a few days ago, I made this video called The Risks of Using Windows 11 Lite. And I went through and I told people about some of the risks that can happen by using this. And then, of course, a few days later, I made this video which was best Windows 11 version, question mark, which means I'm not saying it's the best. I'm asking you a question. Do you think it's the best? And I've got a person there thinking, looking up at what I'm putting there. I also put great job because I do think James, who created it, did a pretty good job at making that build. But if you watched the whole video and didn't skip it, you'd hear me say, and you would see that I was showing malware links coming up at the end of the video. And I was actually pointing out the fact that, uh, you know, these have got some malware links in there. And I also said I would not recommend using it. But of course, people glossed over that and they just wanted to go straight into the comment section and call me a hypocrite and all this sort of stuff. And that's exactly what happens in the YouTube comment section. But I wanted to address it so people understood. Now, of course, we still don't know whether Windows X Lite or Ghost Spectra or Tiny11 or Tiny10 has anything wrong with them. We still don't know whether there is any real bad backdoors, malware, keyloggers or any of that stuff in there, because I don't think anyone has done an extensive test on it to prove that they are dodgy. So there's that going for them, at least. And you may wonder why I haven't had a look at them is because... I have no need to because I don't use them and I would never recommend people use them. So I'm looking at them sometimes in a review just to, for interest and content, 
And maybe that's wrong. Maybe I shouldn't do that. And maybe I need to change my stance on that. But I'm not perfect. Okay, so that's my stance on custom ISOs. Now, you could say, why did I make that video? Well, when I was looking at the actual ISO and I was recording the screen, I actually see at the end there was malware on there. And I thought that would make a good video to show people the dangers of downloading something like this on their computer. So I went along and just started to record and got the malware coming up and I wanted to show people the risks of, of it. And I said at the very end of that video, I would not recommend using something like this. Okay, so let's look at NT Lite here. This is a sort of program that people use to integrate and automate uh, their installations. So they can integrate and install updates, applications, registry files, programs, just about anything. It's going to unpack your ISO, let you manipulate that ISO the way you want, and then repack it again. And the same thing goes for MSMG Toolkit. These will get flagged by your antivirus program as malware because of the type of nature of program they are. Now, again, like I've said before, once you start unpacking and repacking a ISO that you've downloaded from Microsoft, it's then not a legitimate ISO from Microsoft anymore because you've done all the taking out of all the telemetry and stuff. So just bear that in mind. Next up, I want to make sure that you understand about scripts. Now, now, there's quite a few scripts out there or utilities or programs that will remove a lot of telemetry, bloat, uh, privacy concerns, all that sort of stuff. Chris Titus Tech has one, and there's a bunch of other ones out there too that were there long before, and I think that's where he's got the idea from. And I think the scripts have been around for a very long time. Windows Debloater was one of them, but there's a ton of them out there now that are all gaining popularity when you run them. It removes certain features and uh, wherever your flavor is, you can choose which one you like to use. But there's a risk involved when you're messing around with Windows. A lot of people that uh, run these uh, things on their PC, they end up coming onto Discord servers like mine and asking for help to try and reinstall something or basically put something back. And they've removed it with some sort of script and it's now broken or they can't remember what script they use. And there's a, quite a few of them. And uh, Windows 10 Debloater was one of the first ones I think I come across many, many years ago. And uh, I think they've all been a sort of fork off of that, really. And now some of them are pretty uh, clever at what they can actually do. Do I run scripts on my PC? Well, not really. Not as much as what people like to think. I'm pretty straightforward. I would install Windows. I will go into the privacy settings and disable a bunch of in things in there. Maybe use a bit of Shut Up 10 on disabling some of the, uh, you know, some of the telemetry, and that's it. And I'm not really that bothered about it because I know if you do too much, it will break the system, and eventually, that's what happens, and you end up with problems. And this is what a lot of these scripts are. People then run them on the their computer; they have no clue of what it's doing, and all of a sudden they go to open something up, and it doesn't work, and that's because it's been blocked or uninstalled or removed. And that's the problem you got. And once you start going down that rabbit hole, you're going to need to reinstall Windows most of the time, unless you know what you did and whether it's reversible. Not all of these things are reversible. So bear that in mind when you're running some scripts. They're quite aggressive and they will remove things, but they don't have any uh, reinstallation uh, feature built into them. So I really would steer clear of scripts unless you understand what they are, unless you're willing to, uh, you know, reinstall Windows if you. Uh, want to reinstall something that doesn't work anymore. But at the end of the day, you're using a Windows operating system, which is owned by Microsoft, and you're never, ever going to remove all of the telemetry. It's built into the actual operating system. It's bedded deep into the code, and there's no program out there that is going to be able to stop it. Now, I do try to warn people occasionally on the dangers of things, and I've even made up little warnings like this, which I'll pop up on the screen before people will run the script to try and just give them a bit of a heads up of the dangers of scripts. But it's just going to alert people to the dangers of running scripts and things like that on their computer. They are designed to disable and sometimes remove certain features, telemetry, privacy, and other things like that. And sometimes you can't re-enable them once you've ripped them out. It's very, very difficult depending on the type of script that you use. So when I make videos about these scripts, I'll always try to warn people about the dangers of them. 
So at the end of the day, you have a choice. It's you at the end of the day that choose whether you want to run this stuff on your computer or not. Your computer is your responsibility, not mine. Like I said, my channel is about creating content and I create content sometimes and it is what it is. If I make a video on, say, for instance, this operating system, I'm showing you something, doesn't mean I am saying use it. Sometimes people assume a lot of things and they don't know. And if you go to my Discord server, you'll see plenty of times that people have asked for the ISO and guess what I've told them or one of my staff members have told them. No, we don't give out ISO files. As you can see here, custom ISOs are not allowed. Brian cannot link them in his videos. You will have to make them yourselves. There you go, right there. And that was on the 2nd of the 4th, 2023. And there's tons of them on my Discord where I've rejected giving out ISOs to people. So there you go. And here's a, a taster of the comments. Why on earth are you promoting this garbage? Daft question, actually. We all know it's money. Anyone who uses these needs to educate themselves about privacy and especially security. You should know better. Now, I don't normally give people their airtime like this, but again, he should know better. He obviously doesn't watch my channel on a regular basis, and he probably never even watched the whole video, and he posts his nonsense like that. And here is the creator of that ISO. He says, thanks for the fantastic review. He see it as a review, just like you should do. And again, basically, I replied to him saying, hi, James, it's a lovely build. But like I said, on your site, it says 100% safe, 100% clean. But then you let yourself down with malware related download links. Not good look for you, mate. Hope this helps. Have an awesome weekend. There you go. And then you get someone here. Don't let Brightech get you down. I trust the malware related links more, much more than Microsoft. Well, there you go. That's the sort of people you're dealing with in the comments. So here we go. This is a typical example of people trying to goad you into a conversation in the comments section. These two people here are probably mates or they're on the same Discord server talking to each other and they try to get you going. And you can see here, hi, Brian, is it legal to download this onto your PC? If you watch the video, you'll see that the links were related to malware and I re recommended that you didn't download it. Then you get this guy again, BD4. Sorry, Steve, he isn't going to answer you. If he did, he would render himself partially liable. <laughs> He's a solicitor now. Oh, a lawyer. There you go. They're all experts on the comments section. You should know that. And of course, you come down here a little bit more slanderous stuff about myself here. Ah, of course, yeah. He also recommends that you should disable your Windows updates. I've never recommended that at all. So he obviously doesn't watch my content. I might have made a video showing people how to permanently disable Windows updates for people that actually want to disable them permanently. But I wouldn't recommend you do it. And I've never recommended you do it. And if you come onto Discord, you'd hear me say it on there many times and go read some of the forum posts on there and you'll see me saying, don't disable it. So you're, you're a fool. Come further down and it just continues. And there you go. Cheers, mate. They're all mates all of a sudden. They probably knew each other all along, trying to get you to bait into this conversation to try and draw you out and get you to, uh, you know, say what you want to say in the comment section so they can get a little conversation going. Now, one thing I do disagree with on Chris is the fact that he says he uses a lot of, uh, you know, versions of Windows that have been stripped down bare. A lot of stuff has been removed using NT Lite and programs like that, and they use them in this company. I've never known a company to use any sort of, you know, custom ISOs. They will use vanilla ISOs. They may years ago slipstream some drivers or things like that in them or updates but nowadays you don't need to do any of that sort of stuff but i would never known a company to use a a custom iso with all of the components ripped out it just doesn't work like that for me in england that's just not the way it works you know we have microsoft versions of ltsc and uh you know enterprise versions that have all had those bits ripped out of them and they're the things that people use in companies in the uk so I'm not sure what the policies are in America, but I'm pretty sure a lot of law companies and banks and stuff like that would not want to use custom ISOs of that nature. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble, so I'm just going to cut this one off. If anyone was part of my YouTube 
uh, community or part of my Discord server, you'd hear me talking about this sort of stuff on a regular basis and you'd know exactly where I stand when it comes to this sort of thing. Now, one last thing before I end the video is some people have got a short memory. I've made over 3,000 videos on YouTube and uh, for people to just critique you on one video or, or judge you on one video is quite extreme, to be honest. And uh, But anyway, I mean, that's going to be about it. I'm going to leave it right there. But now you know where I stand. My name has been Brian from briotechcomputers.co.uk. Have a lovely Easter and I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now.